Hi, I'm Mark Hovey, Producing Artistic Director here at Paper Mill Playhouse, and this is the Director's Viewpoint. I am thrilled to be sitting right next to one of my favorite people and one of our favorite directors, Casey Hushin, who has delivered this spectacular production of Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. Hi, Casey. Hi, Mark. So happy to be here with you, fresh out of tech rehearsal. Right, of course, right? Rehearsal, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, I want to talk, well, first of all, you have become kind of our resident director for mysteries <laughs> and shows about murder and puzzles and all of that. Um, you bring an incredibly astute point of view to these pieces. Um, is that something that you developed? I know you were working on Clue for a long time. Has it always been a part of your you know, love of these theatrical pieces or did it just bubble up doing Clue? Thank you for saying that. I think Clue really kicked it off, but when I look back, I grew up on, I watched a, a ton of films growing up with my brothers and my mother, and we loved Hitchcock and suspense films and murder mysteries. Um, we watched a lot of comedy, a lot of musicals, but there was always an aspect of thrillers and suspense films that I grew up on. So as I started working on Clue, I realized how much I love doing that as a genre. And both Clue and Murder on the Orient Express, they're very different, but they both combine elements of comedy and also a, a very high stakes murder mystery. So they have a lot of similarities and a lot of differences, but I've really loved stepping into this genre more. And what did you know about this piece before you started directing it? I only knew of it, how famous it was as Agatha Christie's biggest title. And I'm, I'm sure I had read it at some point and knew of the ending, but I'd been away from it for a while. So I went back and read the book. I watched every version I could see and kind of steep myself in it for months to relearn it. And there's so many different um, versions, so many different Poirots over the years. There's so much information and so much research out there. Um, so I really dug through all of it and, and combed through everything I could find about even about Agatha Christie herself and about the history of Poirot. There's so much interesting information out there. I think my first introduction to it was the 1974 film. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember seeing it as a teenager with my parents and being really drawn into it. Um, you know, I wasn't necessarily a, a fan of, of thrillers or murder mysteries, but that movie was really well done. Yes. And the ending was, which we're not going to give away listeners, um, <laughs> was so surprising um, in, in so many ways. And and like you said, the characters are so unique and, and interesting. Um, it's It's... Uh, quite a quite a cast of different people on this train. Yes, it is. And I think that's what makes it so such a perfect piece to theatricalize in this way, because of course there's a familiarity with it, with the title and what it means to people, but it's such an incredibly vivid group of characters that it just is an opportunity for an ensemble of amazing actors to come together and create these vivid portrayals of, you know, character, we have accents Let's see if we can get all these. Oh, there's a lot. Turkish, Hungarian, Belgian, Swedish, Scottish, British, even just from that viewpoint, just the language in the show, right. uh, what it asks of the actors to be for their, you know, to find the portrayals of these characters is so exciting to find. And I think one of the, we have a great cast of people, but for, for them to work on, for the actors to work on, and also for you, there's so many diff, that, so many different levels of reality and truth in the show as we're trying to follow Poirot in his um, unraveling of this murder mystery, trying to figure out what, what is the truth um, and how it leads us to the, the final, the ending scene where things are revealed um, must be a challenging but exciting process for you and the actors to work through together. I think you nailed it. I think that's exactly why with both Clue and this piece, it's such a rewarding experience because it's a great challenge to do the audience experience of the show as one layer, but the experience of you have to do so much prep and so much math and have such knowledge of what every sentence means to each character in each moment to have done the math of the mystery correctly. Right. But it's what makes the show when you're watching it, whether you know the ending or not, it gives a lot of appeal both ways is that those layers are, I feel, what really puts a twinkle in the eye of the actors and the integrity in place of 
the show is digging through each layer of what does each line really mean? What is the audience meant to take from it? What are the actors playing? When are they, when can that duality exist? It's so much fun, so much work and, and reward, but so much fun to find that with the right company of actors. And I do remember you and I talking about this as it related to Clue, um, which is why I knew you were the right director for this piece as well, was exactly what you're talking about, the math of what happens off stage. So to make um, these believable, uh, uh, believable events, right? To, to, to follow the events of what the story is that you think is happening or what we're told as an audience and what truly is happening behind the scenes and the math, you keep saying the math, but of what every character says they've been doing, mm -hmm. what they've actually been doing and how that can work together. It's, you know, there's, we always talk about this when you see a show on stage, especially a musical, there's two shows, right? Mm -hmm. There's the show you're seeing on stage and then there's an entirely other show backstage that the audience isn't privy to, <laughs> yes. but is a whole nother uh, crazy, you know, uh, mess going on. Um, calculated and, yes. and organized mess. But that's what works with these murder mysteries too, is everybody's lying, right? Mm -hmm. From the, from the get go, other than Poirot and Monsieur Book, right? Um, each character is lying about something. They are not telling you the truth. They're not telling you the truth about who they are, about what their activities are, their actions are. And um, so you and the cast have to figure out what that backstory is and what's yes. happening behind the scenes. And we did more table work than usually I think in the amount of rehearsal time we have for a play like this, we'd be on our feet faster. But we had so many meetings in, oh, I almost gave away something, but <laughs> in which we would sit around and do exact and define exactly what you're talking about. Because a lot of it is on the page, thanks to this fantastic adaptation by Ken Ludwig. But there are some things that aren't on the page that are up to interpretation amongst this group of actors to decide what that backstory is. But we felt it was so important before we even got on our feet that every single person in the play had the exact understanding of what their role was and what any relationship might be to anyone else or any all of the details of every bit of backstory we sat around and how show there were diagrams there were charts there were conversations and it was really fascinating to build our own i think it's so important because really then what happens and what we're seeing as an audience is very clear to us in the way it's presented and then when things as they normally do in these kind of uh, situations, everything gets flipped on its upside down. Mm -hmm. You understand and 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 recognize the reality. But like you were talking about, actors in a scene, there may be three actors in a scene. Two of them are lying. One's telling the truth, and they all have to at least be on the same page yes. about as actors who's doing what in that moment. Yeah, and how well are they acting as their characters, right. as to not betray something to the audience, but to heighten this or to that. It's like these subtle little. Right. adjustments of the dials. It's like a sound mixer board with each character in every moment, exactly what level they're playing at with each other. And then even the, when things start to unravel at the end, it's a slow progression. It's not like a big cataclysmic, aha, and there's the answer. Things mm -hmm. unravel slowly. And that's, I think, what's exciting about the show is it's not in one moment do we get the whole ending. Yes. Do we get the answer that we've been searching for the whole play? It, it's it's like pulling the thread out of a sweater, right? It, it starts to unravel slowly, that. right? And then all of a sudden it speeds up and it speeds up and all the walls come tumbling down. And I hope with people who do know the ending, there's a responsibility, I think, in managing all the detail of the play. So whether you see it for the first time and then come back and see it again and right. you're looking at it with different eyes or you do know ultimately where it's heading, you really have to color every little detail along the way to have done that all correctly and truthfully because I believe audiences will be watching for all of that detail and truth. And I know that this happened with Clue and I think it will happen with this as well is that there will be repeat viewers. People yes, I think will so. come and see the show and watch. And like you said, whether they're familiar with the piece or not, you get to the end and there's a surprise and you finally, the, the ending is revealed. Um, and then you sort of want to step it back and go, <laughs> how was I bamboozled into not knowing that, right? Like, how did they, how did they fake me out? Yes. And I think that's a lot of the fun. And of, it's fun to the watch the audience take the journey. You know, so far we've seen it once at an invited dress, but you, you felt 
Poirot comes down at the beginning of the show and welcomes the audience and it sort of invites them in to share the evening with him and you can feel them trying to follow each clue and deciding in each moment what they think and that they're really taking his the ride with him through the whole play to the very end. And I think I was surprised to feel, I knew there would be an opportunity for comedy in the show because I'm such a fan of Ken Ludwig's work, but also because I think high stakes always, and the high stakes and the truth of a situation like this also lend themselves to comedy beautifully. That's what works about this intersection of of farce or a little bit of comedy and murder mystery. But what I didn't expect to find in the play initially was, I think there's a bit of emotion in the ending that I hadn't felt at first that I'm really excited that I think we're finding in the play that you can have all of those things along the way if the if the math adds up correctly. I think you're exactly right. I mean, we know Cut and Love Break in his, his body of work and I was surprised, I expected there would be some laughs, but I was expected, I was uh, um, surprised, uh, I didn't expect at how much humor there is in it. And, and I remember you were talking about this in the rehearsal studio, wondering where that line is. Mm -hmm. How much can we play that there are jokes and how much is this serious? And it's both, yes. right? And I think a lot of that happens in reality, that in the dire most circumstances, sometimes yes. things become the funniest to us. It's, a really, it's like a pressure re relief, yes. right? Or or just like you say, we're living on the edge. Yes. It's so heightened that the tiniest thing sets us off either into tears or laughter. Yes. Right? And that's where a lot of this play lives. I think so too. And uh, you know, there's definitely something to be said about, we talked a lot at the beginning of playing the show truthfully, but that doesn't mean serious, dry, plain. It, I think that that's where the comedy comes from as well, is if you're being truthful to the circumstance that you are in and mm. the life and death stakes you're portraying, that you can heighten the style level to a thousand, but if it's tethered to truth always, then you're able to stay, I think, in the same play and shift that tone. It was such a, I think my favorite challenge of this working on this play has been learning what the tone needs to be, line mm -hmm. to line, moment to moment, right. to be able to curve through all of those different lanes that we're talking about and keep the show in alignment all the way through stylistically. And I think the truth leads the way with both the comedy and the mystery, because then even the comedy should come from the characters, the circumstance, the moments, like they're truthful to the story that we're telling. Right, but just thinking about that, that is a lot of levels to carry all at one time. It's like, you know, yes, this seven... is why I look so tired right now. And I'm <laughs> glad that this is a podcast. <laughs> no, but it's kind of like a seven layer cake, right? Or like uh, that there's so many things happening simultaneously. It is who's telling the truth, who's lying, who's covering up something, what emotion are they feeling? You know, is it is there comedy to it? Um, but like you said, the, the base of it all is truth and honesty. But then this is a highly stylized piece yes. as well, right? It takes place in 1934. Yes. Um, on it's board. so glamorous. Like it's such right. a glamorous, cosmopolitan, sophisticated, elegant, luxurious world to be transported to. And I think you have a great team of designers on yes. this beautiful set by Beowulf Borat and, you know, gorgeous costumes by Mariah Hale. Um, you know, the the look of it is, is really spectacular. Um, it is, as you say, very elegant, mm -hmm. but the style um, heightens things as well, mm -hmm. right? Just the way people carried themselves then, the way they dressed up to travel, yes, yes. right? There's, there's a different sensibility about it. And then on top of that, um, are they dressing for the character mm -hmm. that they really are? Mm -hmm. Or are they dressing for the person they're pretending to be? I mean, there's so many layers in all of that. It was fun to watch these actors step into the clothing because they mm -hmm. were feeling the style in the room and you don't want to wait for the clothing to dictate that, but it can't help but elevate them when they put when you put on a white fur and diamonds or even the men are dressed, every detail, the scarves, the pocket squares, the spats, jackets, gloves, it, it's so divine the way it looks looks and mm -hmm. it definitely helps tell the story we're telling and put us in the right world. 100%. And then there is this beautiful set that was designed by Beowulf Bart. It, you know, the Orient Express, the train is on stage um, and there's great opportunity and great challenges in that. Yes. Because the, the train actually does move. Um, it arrives, it, it, we move from car to car, but then it gets stuck in the snowdrift, that's part of the plot. Um, and so 
and it's a very confined space. Mm-hmm. Yes,、um, it is. And I think that's that's written into the show, right? In fact,、um, Monsieur Perot talks about that right at the beginning about、uh, these people being in a confined space, very close together for a short period of time, and then they arrive at their destination and may never see each other again, go their、mm-hmm. separate ways. But that's a challenge for a director and for actors、um, to operate. To commit、yes. a murder, yes. To have a, mur- everybody knows there's a murder. It's murder on the Orient Express. But to have this murder happen, and then、um, to solve the mystery with these, how many people are in the company? It's ten.、Uh, I think I can't remember. Ten or twelve. I want to say ten. Anyway, I think it's ten. Ten on stage, but in this sometimes very confined area. Very confined, and I think Beowulf's. Des- I think Beowulf's a genius, and this design is really brilliant. It tells、yeah. the story so beautifully, and it. It gives all of that luxury and opulence we were talking about, and the train becomes a character in the play. Yeah. But there were moments, like there are long sequences that take place in a very tight rectangular space with ten bodies. So there, there's a, an overarching theme in the work on this show, in that the line by line specificity, intricacy, complexity that that we're talking about in the layering of the characters is also in the staging.、Mm-hmm. Every stage picture where your focus is, where your eye is, in this little rectangular box. But what's so brilliant about it is it creates that sense of claustrophobia of people are trapped within a circumstance, and it's essentially a locked room murder.、Um, but it does put you in this contained environment in which no one can escape. You know, and that really is true. That they, and I'm sure that Miss Christie thought about this.、Um, you know, being in this train that is stopped in a snowbank, there is no escape. You know, everybody is in, like you said, in a locked environment. The clues are all there. Um, eventually, he's going to figure it out. Somebody, we think, you know. I mean, I don't think we're giving it away that they do solve the murder by the end of the show. <laughs> but、um, you know,、uh, all those elements are there together, and again, it heightens the stakes for the the actors and the characters too, because you are literally right on top of each other,、yes. and not knowing. Everybody's,、mm-hmm. you know, giving a side eye glance to everybody else in the room, right? And、you、I、know? was thinking of the larger train car, but there are some scenes in which three train cars play side by side, and it's a tiny little rectangle in the center there. And we've got、like、nine or ten bodies、cars. in the sleeper cars.、Right. Yep. And the the what it takes in the rehearsal room to find literally minute to minute, I'll pull my shoulder up, and you can pull down, and you can get. The, it's like we're jammed in this tight little space. But that's what makes it so unique and、right. so interesting and so challenging to work on. And it brings the company so close together as an ensemble too. Well, they have to be because literally they're on top of each other <laughs> all the time. Truly,、um, and they are a great group of people. I mean,、uh, some just some spectacular. The, yeah, some of the best acting I've, I've seen in, in a long time, and that they're able to、um, handle all those layers of the cake we talked about: the、yes. style, the the commitment, the passion, the the comedy, the the. Pathos. The,、yeah. the there's there's real, you know, fear in these moments, and and like you said, at the end there is some emotional、uh, um, tugs at the heart that come really unex- unexpectedly. Yes. And I think a lot of that is due to you as、Thank、the director,、you. and also to the company really committing to the material. Yes. And I do. And、uh, Tony Cochran, who's playing Poirot, I think、yeah. is just magnificent, and he has become. An anchor for this company to be this sort of、um, the vivid group of characters we talked about, colorful, you know, these colorful characters that surround him throughout the piece that he's constantly trying to figure out. He brings such a heart to the play as Poirot, which was not the first thing you would imagine, maybe, but he really anchors the piece in this wonderfully grounded way, where he can still have his fun and his wit and his fully realized portrayal as as the eccentric, peculiar. Man, we know Perot to be, but he brings a real humanity to it. I think, and I think Tony has a lot to do with finding those moments along the way that add up to the emotion at the end. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, and it is a tough,、um, a tough role,、mm-hmm. and a huge load to carry. The amount of text. Yeah, there are a few. I was thinking about this the other day. There are shows that are, you know, like Masterclass. That whoever is. Portraying、um, Maria Callas, you know, it basically is a monologue that a couple、mm-hmm. of people step into,、um, you know. But that is not unlike the load that Tony is carrying in the show.、Um, certainly,、uh, you know, there's a lot of other activity, but he is the through line and really dri- 
Driving the train. <laughs> there there we you go. go. There's our first train <laughs> reference. No, but really, you know, carrying the whole the whole thing. Yes. It, it, and it's not always conversational, which is sometimes easier to memorize and flow mm. with. Often it's interrogation sequences in which Poirot is changing tactics deliberately at different times. But yeah. there are so many facts and pieces of information and lists of information that Tony had to hold in his mind to, to be able to drive these interrogations and know why he was pivoting to a completely different topic when and where and how. It was, like it, it was a really Herculean effort to do it in this amount of time and he's been just wonderful. And not only that, but also the physicality of it, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of business of you know discovering these clues and murder weapons and bits and pieces that that have to, all all the pieces of the puzzle that pull together, and a lot of that is is on him as well to sit, just bring that all together. It's so great. I do want to just mention every cast member because they're spectacular. So you'll help me go down the line. Donna English, who's Brilliant. Princess Dragomoth. Brilliant just, paper mill regular, but right. I I just run don't walk to be near Donna English at all times. She, she's a favorite of both of ours and we've known each other for many years, but <laughs> just spectacular every time. And her companion is Stephanie Gibson. Yes, as, Greta uh, Olsen. Greta Olsen, our Swedish um, <laughs> nanny, right? Yeah. Alex Mandel. Yes, a return uh, a return passenger, as we say, from Clue, where he played Mr. Green. He's right. playing um, McQueen. Speaking of uh, return returnees, Graham Stevens. Mm-hmm. Michelle, the train conductor, Graham Stevens. Um, also, we have the brilliant and wonderful Karen Ziemba. Oh, I'm so happy to get the chance to work with Karen. She's just absolutely amazing, and she's so wonderful in this role. She, she really is, is terrific. Um, uh, she was here, I think the last time she was here, she played Miss Adelaide in Guys and Dolls, and I've <laughs> been a fan of hers for so many years, and just we're thrilled to have her back. Um, Evan Zess. Evans S is new to me and new to us too. I'm just so excited to yeah. know of him and want to work with him a million times over after this experience. He's so funny and so delightful and so inventive and he brings so much to this role and to the play. Yeah, and he really is so much of the energy, I yes. feel like, of the piece. Um, and so funny. A lot of the comedy comes from him, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Gisela. Gisela Chipe as the mm -hmm. countess. Glamorous. She's absolutely glamorous and and different, which I love. Like she inhabits the, what's important about what you might think of as the archetype of the style, but also has her own way around this entirely. And she's such a smart actress and, and a great lady. She's really wonderful in the play. Um, new to us too is Leanne. Leanne Antonio playing Mary Debenham. Who's just a delight. Very, yes, she what, is. what a sweet, uh, warm uh, personality on stage. And then yes. another newcomer to us, Mark Jude Sullivan. Yes, Mark is fantastic. And has a, has a tough role, be, be, tough role, but he actually plays two different parts. He does play two different parts. I mean, actually, not that he's yes. lying and, and being somebody else, but he's actually two different people in the show. He's the only person who does that. And I will have to tell him this, I haven't yet, but someone said to me yesterday that, um, this is a high compliment to Mark Jude Sullivan, but they asked why his the other character was missing from the curtain call. <gasps> Oh my god. Isn't that, that great? Is brilliant. I have to yes. tell Mark that. So that, that means exciting. he's really doing his job. Amazing. And a couple of other designers we didn't mention. Charlie Morrison, fabulous lighting. So beautiful on the set. And and again, that's it's a tough set to light because everything's linear and tight together. Yes. Um, Matt Kraus, great on our sound. And Matt has been like months in the making. We've found a lot of musical moments in the play, um, ways to score it and give it sometimes that sort of cinema feel or just tension or, you know, it, music does so much for this play, I think, in the right areas. And Matt has been absolutely relentless in his work and pursuit of what he's done with the show. And I'm so grateful to him for that. And the other piece that obviously people won't understand until they see it um, is the projections and mm -hmm. how they work so beautifully with Beowulf's design. So that's Jason Lee Corson. Who's yes, done incredible yeah, it work. does really enhance the design to begin with is so fantastic. But Jason's work, I think, really enhances it and brings a whole nother layer to it while you know honoring what the original design was. And then finally, of course, which is in a period piece like this with style is hair and wigs and makeup, yes. which is Carissa Thorlexen. Yeah. And done. she was wonderful too, I think. And been through, you know, we'll try three or four different things and what, do whatever it takes to find the exact right look for each one and the exact right storytelling for each character. And color, shape, shade, all of that. And 
again, style. It's all mm -hmm. about lifting it all up. Uh, there's a million other people who've worked on this backstage, out front, all of it. So uh, we're not mentioning everybody who's done such an incredible job on the show, but um, it really is, uh, I was going to say, a fun ride. Here I get that terrible <laughs> pun again. But it is. It's it's a great experience. It it whizzes by. Like the first act is so fast. It's like a bullet train you're yes. on, you know? Um, when and ends on a great cliffhanger and then act two is so satisfying and beautiful. So I'm I'm thrilled and excited about uh, the rest of the run. We're just getting started our first performances tonight. I know, it's tonight. so exciting. First preview tonight. I know, it'll be great. We had a great final dress last night. And I don't want to let you go without telling people how excited we are that you're coming back to us next season. I am so excited. I know I say it all the time, but Paper Mill is my absolute favorite place to work. And I'm so happy to be coming back to do beautiful next season. I can't wait. So well, Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> Glad to have you aboard. <laughs> And on that, we'll end it. Thanks so much for listening and see you at the theater.